So on this video, we will be giving the demonstration on how to use the multicast feature. So multicast is a pretty common use feature nowadays for devices to work without a server. And as we know that multicast is a IP routing protocol that used to distribute data such as um, audio or video streaming broadcast to multiple recipients. So using the multicast, we can send a single copy of data to a single multicast address, in which then distribute to an entire group of recipients. So on this demonstration, I will be um, using these um, from real IP phones, and also I just unboxed a brand new um, SB15 that works during speakers for the demonstration on the um, SB15 and login right here. Okay. And as you can see that um, all three zipper accounts staying on figure, so none of the uh, zipper account is um, registered. And let's click on events. There is a multicast option. So we need to um, enable the multicast uh, first. And then filling out the multicast address. So there is a specific range for the uh, multicast address. I believe uh, that is from 329.224. Uh, um, so we can do like, um, let's see. So we can do like this. And keeping the multicast part to 2000, I believe that is fine. And name it paging and click on submit. And also um, logging into the um, IP phone um, system. On the, okay, on the uh, function key. We need to set up the uh, multicast as well. So let's um, do multicast. And name, let's do paging. And uh, putting out the multicast address. So uh, you need to put out, so if there is no uh, multicast part option here, so you need to put up the part number here. So we um, set it up to 2000 for the multicast part, so 2000, 2000. So we are uh, 2000 and choosing the uh, 711 uh, audio quality, I, this should be fine. Let's give it a try. Um, click on apply. Okay. Hello. Hello. The audio um, quality is not good at all. So let's try the old path. Click on apply. Right. Let's give it another try. The old path is way much better. So that is a quick demonstration on how to use the uh, multicast. All right, so um, all right, so that is a uh, quick demonstration. So let's move on. Okay, so Oops. on this video. Oops. And um, for the next section, we will be going over the system parameters. So let me share my um, browser here. Share browser. Mm. 
Okay, so that is our um, system. All right. Okay. Okay. So that is our uh, system page saying the um, IP audio center. So we will be going over this uh, system um, page to page and see. Uh, and I will giving the brief explanation if there is a setting that might look confused to people. So um, on the index page, the uh, dashboard, so it is labeled as some um, information here, such as the system information, storage, and license information. So if you do not have your license um, uh, uploaded, it was the subject would be saying an utterance, and it also showing you the endpoint license number. And uh, I believe we are giving a 45 day uh, free trial period and up to 30 um, endpoints. And moving on to the register static. So on this page, it will be uh, giving out all the FIP accounts information um, here. So uh, I got a whole bunch of FIP accounts created and all of these. Um, I already um, use them, so I will have their IP address and also their status. So for those FIP accounts that I haven't used, it will be uh, showing none um, IP address and the status will be unknown. So I don't think that we'll be having any problem on this uh, page. Moving on to the uh, FIP account. So it is the page that you where you create the uh, FIP account. So uh, simply clicking the edge or the bucket um, option. So it is always a, a good idea to turn on the uh, enable video option while you're using the bucket because like um, let's say if you are creating 100 or 200 of SIP accounts and you do not know like which SIP account you are going to um, take on the video stream. So it is always a good idea to turn it on. And um, the amount of um, accounts and for password, if you leave it blank, it will be um, the system will be automatically generate a uh, random password for you. So that is um, pretty straightforward on the SIP account page. And on the uh, devices, it will be list out all the registered um, um, devices right here. So if you do need to like um, configure a third party device onto our system, you can do it right here, manually adding um, the device to our system by clicking the add button. So I believe we saw the, um, the third party IP cameras video yesterday that is using the manually like adding the, the cameras into our system. So for device type, you are going to select the specific device type right here. So is it like an IP phone or it is like a um, microphone or a, a, a speaker? So as you may realize that the camera is the, on, um, is the only option that does not require the uh, SIP account number, which also means um, the camera do, um, does not count your license, the number of licenses. So you may register as many as you would like the um, cameras onto our system, and it will affect like it will like minus your license, the number of licenses at all. And uh, for RTSP address, so um, if you are choosing the uh, camera, your cam your camera has to be RTSP. And uh, for RTSP address, you should be able to find the RTSP address from the um, the camera uh, menu. So there are only a few uh, formats of the RTSP address format. So it often 
um, goes with like um, it looks like this plus the RTSP colon double slash plus the um, IP address and uh, plus the RTSP part. So the part I believe is 506 or 566. Um, so, and for some of the camera, they require authentication. So you need to put it up like the uh, username slash uh, password here and plus the IP address and the part number. So there are only like three to four um, format of the RTSP address and you should be able to find it on your like camera menu. So that is a uh, quick um, explanation. And on our intercom device, you are able to select the video terminals. So we support at most 16 video terminals right here. So you can select up to um, 16. So once you um, like uh, trigger or activate the um, the intercom, it will be automatically pull out the image that is from your connected um, camera that you type it right here. And let's see what else. So on the uh, speaker device, the allowed live paging is automatically turned on. But for other devices such as um, intercom, we can turn it on, but the default is uh, uh, disabled. And also like IP phone, you can also turn it on, but the default is also uh, disabled. So that is uh, pretty much it. And uh, moving on to the group. So we support a limited number of uh, patient groups. So you can create as many as you would like. And uh, simply clicking the add button and filling out this um, information, such as the name of the patient group and also um, description and also selecting the uh, dispatch user. So you are able to select like um, multiple dispatch user here and selecting the um, devices that you want to put on to this group. So let's say, and dispatch. So it's pretty um, straightforward. And so, so moving on to the uh, telephony. So as you guys may or may not know that Seco has been embedded in uh, PBS for more than 10 years. So we are pretty professional on this uh, telef business telephony system. So that is also the reason why we uh, bring out this piece, the telephony piece and integrate with our um, IP audio solutions. So on the, um, we have implemented this full set of um, telephony features into this um, uh, IP audio solution. So let's take a look on the trunk. So trunks would be, um, let's say if you got some like zip trunks or uh, another kind of trunk, so you can um, bring out the information here. So on right here is some pretty um, standard telephony uh, parameters. So let's see. And on the outbound tool, so it would be a uh, creating the ads and selecting the trunks and um, creating the patterns like X, X, point X. So creating the uh, patterns here, so it would be some um, standard outbound tool. And also the inbound tool would be for like um, the rule for incoming calls. And also for IVR, we have uh, implement the IVR here. And on the IVR level, we support unlimited level, so you can create as many level as you would like on the event. So let's say like, if you uh, press one, it goes to a IP phone and go to a specific IP phone. And uh, waste prompt is the place that where you store your um, Waste prompt. So you can upload any like um, um, audio prompts right here. For report, so uh, call off, 
you are able to review all the recordings by um, creating this little uh, play icon, this green play icon. I don't say, oops, here we go. And you are able to play, um, like review the uh, recording. And also you can select from a uh, specific range. So we have the uh, date uh, research. Okay, so here you go. And for recording, so for this page is similar similar on um, to the dispatch console. We have divided the uh, recording into four different sections, including the uh, meeting and intercoms and announcements and also phone calls. So they would be pretty much uh, the same as the call off. So play, click on the uh, play buttons and reveal the um, the recording for settings. For system settings here. So for this section, it confused people uh, a little bit. So before we talk about it, so let me log into another page. So for this uh, 206, this page is our SP15, so it's our speaker page. And right here, uh, events. And right here, we also have a volume, and on our center, we also have the volume here. So it confuses people a lot. All right, so um, for volume, we actually have two different uh, type of volume. So for the first one would be the software volume, which means um, it is the volume level that is controlled by the software. And also we have the hardware volume. So the hardware volume would be the volume that is already built and um, controlled by the hardware. So for this before paging volume, so this volume means the um, the hardware volume while you are using the paging. So let's say um, if we have our before paging volume set to seven, and we are using this speaker, the SV15, for doing the paging. And I have my speaker volume set to two right here. So uh, when I do a paging for this volume, it will be automatically go up to seven, and it will go down, go back to the um, to the volume level two once I finish my paging. And you can um, control the software. Uh, volume on the dispatch console. So this volume means the hardware volume that is um, while you are doing the paging. And on the default alarms volume for this volume, it actually means the um, the software volume, which means um, because like you are doing the alarms and the hardware volume, we already um, like. Um, Set it up to the maximum number that you can use, so you are not able to control the hardware volume while you are doing the um, doing the alarms right here. So for the um, like 75 or like 66, it would be the software volume. Yeah, and um, these two sections like uh, confuse people a lot. All right, so for the uh, paging feed. Paging this begins. So if you have this option turned on, you will have the sound of like ding 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 ding. This kind of uh, bit before the uh, paging is begins. And also on the feature code. So that is the uh, trigger number. I believe we saw the, um, these two from yesterday's uh, video using the scheduled uh, task. So if you have a task called 1024, you can dial star 11, 1024. So it would be star 11 plus the, um, the task number to trigger the task. And pressing the star 12, 1024 to end the task. So for these two uh, feature code, you are not able to change them at all. They already fixed. But for those like do not disturb or like reserve with call with a fight or call split, for this feature code, you are able to change them. 
So let's say in um, like ATA. So I can do it, but for this um, two feature code, they already fed it. And on the uh, dispatch user, is the place where you can um, create the dispatch user. So we do support unlimited number of dispatch user right here. So simply clicking the edge and giving them the username and password. And also um, selecting the group that selecting the group that they can um, they can control and they can use. And also we have the permission and access level right here. And IP phone means the master phone. So if I have um, the IP phone registered, it will be showing here. So if this uh, dispatch user is already um, select a specific IP phone, the other dispatch user won't be able to select this uh, master phone anymore. And for labels, like uh, it's just a label. For licenses, so if you haven't, uh, so for this um, system, you already upload a license key. So for those uh, systems that haven't uploaded any license keys, it will be showing there is a, um, like a form table, and you need to fill in the information such as your uh, contact, uh, your contact information, and your email address and um, address, company, company name, etc. And after you fill out the text field, click on the download button. It will be uh, generate a um, a file. Send this file to your contact person, such as your salesperson, and they should be return you a license key. And simply clicking the upload button to upload any um, license keys that is returned to you. So um, the license process is pretty um, straightforward. And on uh, language, we support English and Chinese um, only at this moment, and because like, we are still working on the translation on other language, but we should be able to give out um, more options of language later on. And I don't think there's anything here, like change password and lockout. So that is um, a brief overview on the system and take a look on the uh, So um, on our system page, we support uh, multiple account registration. So we can um, register up to zip account, and it will be showing the uh, zip account information on the index page, such as the uh, SIM numbers and plus the IP address and the part number and would be saying, okay, it is uh, registered or like registration failed or unconfigured. And um, for registering the SIP account, it's pretty um, straightforward. So we need to fill in out the SIP server and the part number, uh, SIP account numbers and passbook here and choosing the uh, transport method. So um, one thing here, if you would like to use this endpoint to be able to use our IP audio center, you do need to like enable this option. Otherwise, it will like show up on the console and you cannot um, use it to the IP audio center. You do need to like enable this option. And um, the secondary receiver kind of looks um, exactly the same. And for P2P accounts, so the P2P feature is the new feature that we just implemented with our version of 1.20. And um, let's say for Codex, so we have the uh, 722 Codex, and both of the 711 Codex um, enabled it as default setting, and we have the old path as um, default is um, disable because the old path requires more bandwidth and if you are using our endpoints to on a third party system, they probably not like supporting the old path. So that is why we keep the uh, old path disable. But if you would like to turn it on, just like turn it on. 
on the uh, event settings. Um, what else here? So for local pod and um, RTP style pod uh, range and the end pod range, those are the um, standard stuff. So you can leave it as before. And for the uh, low ranger, so one thing that is also the new feature that we implemented with the 1.20 uh, system uh, version, I mean. So if we have the low ranger um, turned on using the uh, SIP, the primary SIP account and selecting the ringtones, so we uh, provide several ringtones here and we can uh, preview the ringtone. All right. So if we have um, this raw ranger um, turned on, so if I have a call coming, it will be playing this ringtone um, until I pick up the call. And for volume, then uh, we just talk about it. And IO setting. We done a quick demonstration on the IO setting um, yesterday. So for the yesterday example, I believe we use the um, trigger by call status. So if you would like the trigger by the uh, DTMF, so I'm clicking that on. And uh, for events, we have incoming and also hang up. So <clears throat> if we have the uh, event selected as incoming, it will be um, whatever that you type with the relay on the, in the back of the speaker. The, um, let's say we type a light, a emergency light with the speaker. So whenever there is a call coming, like incoming, it would be the light would become um, um, would be flashing. And on the relays, we also I believe we can show it here. So on the mode, we also have the uh, delay with that. So we can set up thing like um, ten seconds. So um, there are uh, delay with that and also hang up with that two option here. So the hang up with that means once I hang up the call, the light will be go off. And the delay with that would be um, if we set it to 10 seconds, so the light would be go up to 10 seconds and it will off. So that is the major difference. And uh, multicast, so I believe we just watched a uh, multicast video. So let's move on to the prompt uh, language. So for this uh, voice prompt language, we are we support uh, Chinese and um, English at this moment. So it would be the voice that you are um, getting the IP address, and it will um, if you select English, it will read out your IP address um, in English. If you set to Chinese, it will read out in Chinese. For systems, we don't have anything here, but and uh, time zone. So that is the uh, standard stuff for accounts, like changing passwords for upgrades. Okay, so uh, upgrades. Um, if you guys are using the 1.1 uh, version and you are trying to upgrade to the 1.20, the new version, please. Enable this option, the reset factory default, and um, upload the uh, firmware here. So, um, upgrading from the 1.1 to the 1.2, it does require you to reset the factory uh, default uh, option here. So, if in any cases that you do not turn it on, you do need to manually reset it here. So it would be a good idea if you are like in the, enabling um, this option right here and um, uploading the the new uh, frame rate. And for right here, so for pin, it's just like pinning a um, a IP address and to check on the uh, data package if it like lo losing any data package. So that is the um, standard pin, uh, pin capture. 
And also we have the um, Ethernet capture, so click on start and wait for a few seconds and click on stop. It will be automatically download the uh, PCAP um, files and you can analyze these uh, files using the, um, the application. So that is uh, pretty much about the uh, system setting. Did I miss anything here? English and Chinese version? Okay. All right, okay, and moving back to our presentation slides. Uh, share content. Okay, and moving back to our um, presentation slides, I have one more slide left. So um, just a brief introduction to our dispatch app. So the functionality on the dispatch app is uh, let then what you can do on the dispatch console, but it is still a uh, perfect solution. If you are not in front of your desktop and default capacity is not capable at the moment, you can still use our dispatch app to play uh, background music and do some paging and uh, work on like using the RTTF uh, paging. And also you are able to monitor all the devices status right here. So if the device is showing green, so it means the device is online and if so in gray, that means the device is offline. So it is still a perfect solution if you are not in front of the dispatch console and you still like can monitor all the devices. 